LC9. Take your heads, Jeff, with another gun review for you. This time, let's do a quick one on a Ruger product. This is the LC9. We'll talk about the original LC9 that uh, was launched at SHOT Show in 2011. So uh, there have been some developments in the LC9 line since then. Uh, we'll touch on that a bit as well, but let's, let's keep this a relatively quick one. This is model 03206, the LC9-LM. It shoots uh, 9mm Luger, so your popular uh, 9x19 round. It is recoil operated with a locked breech, double action only. That's important, especially if you're coming from a Glock world, for example, uh, where it's striker fired. It's a very different um, operating mechanism uh, for the trigger. Uh, something you may need to get used to, but there's some advantages. This is a semi-automatic pistol. And it does feature a few things. First, let, let's go through the box, and then when we get it out, we'll talk about the features. Uh, magazine, as it comes from the factory, has this uh, half-inch long pinky extension on the bottom. Uh, if you don't like that for whatever reason, they have a flat plate that goes on the bottom as well. You see it's shipped with this little soft nylon case. In it, we have their lock. It's a trigger lock that... Um, Honestly, I've never used. There's a little hole here where you put it in, you can lock or unlock. Um, can't tell you much about it other than the part is here and it's supposed to work. You got your manual. Notice this manual is also for the LC380. So this is a uh, very similar, you know, identical operating mechanism to the LC380 with the smaller 380 round. Uh, we have a Ruger branded lock. That's good. Want to keep it safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ruger. It's nice of them to put that card in there. Pimping shopruger.com, where you can go buy stuff. Um, another shopruger.com telling you what they have. Uh, clearly, they're making a little money on the gun, but they want to make more uh, off of their web presence to sell you retail products. Always like to see the NRA sign up. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure the NRA is the most effective organization we have fighting for our rights anymore. They t tend to want to compromise more than I like, but at least they're making an effort, so we'll give them credit there and give Ruger credit for making an effort. Uh, an announcement about an old model that has um, some work that needs done. So, nice way to get the word out. Ruger Conversion Department. This is... Um, Another part of that single action revolver piece. Laser max center fire, we'll talk about this in a second. Doesn't apply directly to the gun as it is right now. Um, for the gun Nazis, the different jurisdictions that require that you turn in a spent case fired from the weapon. You got this here. Um, find that rather annoying. Guess what? was made in the USA. I like that. That's important. So set the box and some of these other things aside. And um, let's talk about the LC9 pistol itself. So what we have here, because of the safety features, I was getting to earlier a loaded chamber indicator. Uh, loaded chamber indicator right here. It says loaded when up. And that little uh, section of bright metal on the black slide actually rotates up a little bit and has some red paint on it so you can actually uh, tell when there's a, a bullet in the chamber for safety reasons you know as, as with any of our videos you know we're we're um, clear no ammunition in the in the firearm um, also has a magazine disconnect I'm not sure I really like that uh, basically what it means is when you release the slide and you'll note the thumb slide release it's actually a slide catch it holds it you can't release it there you actually have to pull back the catch drops and then you can let go um, not sure I like that either but without a magazine in the pistol the trigger does not work it's an empty magazine um, 
when we place that empty magazine in, and we'll verify the chamber is still empty, now the trigger fires. So that's what the magazine disconnect does. I'm sure you can argue it either way. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, again, this being the double action only model, the LC9, you have a double action trigger, so cycling the slide doesn't do anything for you in terms of the hammer. You know, striker fired guns, for example, uh, single action, double action, you rack the slide and you're cocked and ready to go. In this one, double action only, you have to pull the trigger to get the hammer to move, and of course there's no mag in it, so it's not working now. Um, depends what you're used to, depends on what you train with. If this is what you're going to use, train with it, you'll get used to it. You have the benefit if you have a round that doesn't go bang when you pull the trigger, pull the trigger again and it's going to cycle the hammer and, and drop the firing pin on that round again and maybe it works that time. So uh, we actually have some rounds that were loaded a little less than perfectly um, that we keep as a batch because some of them don't fire every time. And uh, it's nice with the DAO gun to be able to keep pulling the trigger and see if, okay, on the second strike, does it fire? And, you know, usually it does. So uh, that's a benefit of a double action only. So uh, under, understand that if you're debating on what type of trigger you want. Uh, some specs about this. It's a little over 3 inches uh, on the barrel length. So we got 3.12 inches. Uh, six inches long, total four and a half inches tall. Um, notable feature here, less than an inch wide, 0.9 inches wide on the slide. Weighs in about 17.1 ounces, empty. So, you know, reasonably light, fairly small. Thin is really important if you're going to do concealed carry. We like that. This is a polymer frame. Uh, it's a glass-filled nylon. And the body up here on this particular one is a blued alloy steel. It comes with one magazine. We already talked about the extension on the bottom, the options you have there. Uh, this was announced at SHOT Show in 2011, so this hadn't been a lot around too long. Really interesting that it, since this has come out, there have been two more models in the LC line, the LC9S, which is striker fired, and the LC9S Pro, that, let's see, where is that one hiding? Here we go, LC9S Pro. So you can see they pretty much look identical except a few things here, uh, and both of these are empty by the way. Um, LC9S Pro is striker fired, so you have the cover on the back as your exposed hammer on the DAO version. This LC9 has a manual safety here. LC9S also has a manual safety, LC9S Pro does not. You'll see a Laser Max laser mounted on this. It actually came on the LC9, but uh, I'm selling the LC9 in favor of the LC9S Pro, so I moved the laser over here. Um, otherwise, very similar gun as far as uh, specs and everything. So, what, what do we like, what do we not like? Uh, Bob is one of the NRA instructors who writes and does reviews here at Gear Report, and Bob actually um, asked me if he could buy this. Um, unfortunately, Bob, I think someone's going to beat you to it. In about 10 minutes, I've got to go meet someone who's going to purchase this. Um, Bob took all of the concealed carry pistols we have here at Gear Report. So that's, uh, we, we've got seven in the review bin right now. He took all seven of those and a few others from other people and went out and shot a variety of things. And when he got done, he said he actually liked this and would consider purchasing it, purchasing it himself. He likes the DAO trigger. I went with the LC9S Pro because I prefer a striker fired trigger, I think. To be honest with you, the Sky CPX2 also with the DAO trigger. The more I shoot it, the more I like it. I'm kind of getting used to the DAO trigger, so I may change my mind later, but uh, for now, I'm going to stick with the LC9S Pro. The way I use it often is pocket carry. There are a variety of these small pocket carry holsters that work, so, you know, simple as drop it in your pocket and it's fairly easy to get out and employ when you need it. Another thing that I like, being a Ruger, uh, you know, fairly big brand name, as soon as these came out, a lot of companies started making accessories. We saw the LaserMax laser for the LC9. Um, 
Williams and Trace, Viridian, they make lasers. A variety of companies make aftermarket parts like ProMag has got a 10-round magazine. So instead of 7 plus 1, that's important here, um, 7 plus 1 in the standard magazine, that's pretty good for the size of this 9mm handgun. When you put the ProMag 10-round mag in, it's a little bit longer, not ungainly. But, uh, you know, for a single stack magazine, which keeps the firearm thin, um, for 20 25 bucks online, you can pick up that ProMag magazine. I've had absolutely no issues with feeding or firing out of either of the 10 round ProMags that we have. Haven't really had any issues with the, the stock Ruger mag either. All around, this has been one of the more reliable uh, pistols that we have tested here at Gear Report. So some of the other things we've tested to compare against, we'll put the LC9 right here. Uh, we've just started testing this Smithfield XDS45. This is the 3.3 inch model. And um, I mean, it's a 45 versus a nine millimeter, not really the same beast. But if you look at the size, these little suckers are almost identical in size. The 45 is slightly wider, but otherwise very similar. So you have a very limited capacity. This is what, five or six plus one versus seven plus one. So, you know, pick your poison there. But again, understand these are in a, a similar size range. The recoil impulse is different. One of the things that we like about compact 9 millimeters is they're light, they're small, they're very concealable. Something I'm not a huge fan of is the idea that with a light, small pistol, uh, 9 millimeter is not a really high recoil round, but there's not a lot of mass here in this firearm to absorb and mitigate that recoil, so it can get a little jumpy on a light pistol. Um, I feel pretty good about the LC9 and how it handles it. What I like about a 45 is often, even though it has a larger um, projectile, it's firing a lot more mass to it, maybe double the size typically on a 230 grain 45 versus 115 grain. Um, nine millimeter Luger, um, it's pushing a lot larger projectile, but the recoil impulse spreads out over a longer period of time, so you don't feel it, you don't get that crack as much. Speaking of a crack, talk about a little baby that'll try to jump out of your hand. This um, Taurus TCP 738 is, um, right, clear. This, this is like the deep concealment gun. It's smaller than the LC9, which is already pretty small. Um, it's tiny. It shoots a 380 ACP, which again, very little mass. Even with that small cartridge, the, the uh, 380, it jumps around. And some of the feedback I've gotten from uh, folks on the team that re have reviewed this is it's hard to, to keep control of it. You know, the recoil actually makes it jump around because the grip's so small. So again, things to compare it to, this Ruger, especially when you have the pinky extension magazine in place, really gives you a good firm handhold. It's got a nice texturing. It's not too aggressive where it hurts your hand, but it gives you a good grip. And there's an indention here for your fingers. And it's fairly, it's not completely ambidextrous. All the controls are set up for a right-handed person, but the grip itself and the way this indention works, if you're left-handed, your fingers are going to fit in that as well. So not doing the grooves on the front like uh, a Gen 4 Glock, for example, but um, doing a little indention for your fingers to sit on the side. It really does help you get a grip. I like the sights on this. That It's a windage adjustable rear sight. It's three dots, so you've got uh, you know, your two dots here, one up front, they're all white, they don't glow. There are aftermarket sights available, a variety of aftermarket um, holsters, so you're going to be well outfitted with this. Um, we've shot a variety of ammunition. We've shot uh, G2 RIP. We've shot poly case, you know, for some strange ones. Um, I shoot a lot of reloaded rounds because we go through so many here, and this has eaten them fairly well. I don't believe we tried the Defender Ammunition Company stuff yet. We'll, we'll try that in LC9S Pro. Uh, Winchester White Box, box Remington White Box, a variety of different XTP-tipped um, expanding hollow point rounds. I think I've even shot some lead um, 
round and flat nose projectile bullets. This has eaten everything pretty well. I don't recall ever having any feed jams or um, failed to eject or stove pipes or anything like that. So overall, I'm sitting here looking at this thinking, why am I about to go meet someone to sell it when it's got a lot going for it? Really, it comes down to the trigger preference. So I like a striker fired trigger that's a lighter pull, a shorter pull, shorter reset. Um, that's kind of the opposite of your typical DAO trigger. And, you know, there are people who argue that's better for a concealed carry gun. You want a little longer trigger pull because in a, in a firefight when the adrenaline's going, um, that longer pull is going to make a difference. The heavier pull isn't going to make a difference. Uh, it may actually keep you from having an accidental discharge. Um, again, I prefer the striker fired, so that's the direction I'm going. Uh, however, I've carried this as my personal uh, concealed carry gun at times. Uh, typically, I'm either carrying a Glock 17 or a full size 1911. Uh, this makes a good pocket backup gun. Um, we already saw the pocket holster. There are a variety of holsters available. Um, we actually have a holster, the Alien Gear Cloak Tuck 3.0. Um, I'm looking at it here on a shelf in the Gear Report office and it's not put together yet. I've got all the parts to put it together, but uh, really nice holster. There are a wide range of holsters available. I can't say enough good things about the LC9. Um, I really like it. Uh, my, again, my preference is the striker fired without the manual safety because I grew up with Glocks and this uh, LC9S Pro mimics the manual of arms a bit more closely to what I'm used to. So, especially if you're a DAO guy, hard to go wrong. And the price point, I believe that I paid $350 for this with the laser, and I, I've seen them on sale for a little bit less. Um, this is a good value compared to what else is on the market. Uh, honestly, it's in about the same price range as the Smith & Wesson MMP9 Shield, which is clear here. Let's uh, release the slide. Shield appears to be slightly wider. It is slightly taller. I don't have the grip in, so it's about the same there. A little bit more bulk on the hand grip, um, but it's a lower capacity. I believe the shield's a 6 plus 1. Well, this is a 7.1. Um, is that correct? I'm going to have to verify that, uh, but regardless, I like the feel of the LC9, especially the LC9S Pro, the double action trigger gives me a little bit of a hard time. The shield's got a better trigger than the um, LC9, although my favorite trigger, again, the LC9S Pro. So um, thanks for looking at some of the options. I hope uh, the comparison to some of the other guns helps you uh, with your decision. If you're thinking about getting one of these, I encourage you to try it out. The LC9, try the LC9S or S Pro and see if you prefer the DAO or the striker trigger. Uh, can't go wrong, it's a good budget gun. Um, from a good company, Ruger made in the USA, good solid company. So uh, if you get one of these, let us know what you think. Check us out at gearreport.com, gear-report.com. We have a Facebook page. We have um, gundistrict.com. We have a page there. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Um, we're all over the place, actually. So um, this obviously is going to be on our YouTube account. We've got a variety of videos there. And each of these guns that you see here, uh, we either already have a video or we're going to have a video up soon. So thanks for watching. Let us know what questions you have. And um, we appreciate you. See you at the range. All right, LC9.